Hello, everybody. It's Ken Davenport. How is everyone? It's Friday night, y'all. It's Friday night. Friday night. This is the late night edition of the Producers Perspective Live, coming to you on a Friday night from the heart of the Upper West Side. Uh, it's 8.45. 8.45. There's a very important reason why we are doing this at 8.45. Uh, it is, we have a very, very special guest tonight, Sergio Trujillo, Tony Award winning choreographer, Sergio, uh, and a fantastic guy. And when uh, we put out this request, Sergio, do you want to do it? He was like, yes, absolutely. I have only one problem. I can't do it at eight o'clock. And I was like, why can't you do it at eight o'clock? What do you have a show? No, you don't have a show. So don't give me that. You don't have a show. He said, I have to put my kid to bed. And my heart just like grew like the, the Grinch on uh, the Grinch who stole Christmas, just like grew inside. Also, I know that feeling because you want to put your, your kid to bed because I do the same thing. So we are here all because of Lucas, all because Lucas has a little bit later bath time and bedtime. Uh, and Sergio knows what his priorities are. He was like, Ken, your live stream, F it. The kid comes first. Uh, and I so agree with that, especially now. This is an unbelievable reminder um, that those are the things that matter the most in this world. We all love the theater. We all love Broadway. We all love these things. But it all should come second to the family and the people around you. And I want to say a special shout out to every single one of my family members, especially that one family member uh, that is alone right now. But I'm thinking a lot about it. So, Let's get to it. Don't forget why we're here. We are here for the Actors Fund. I'm coming to you every single night in order to showcase the Actors Fund. They are working their butt off. We're also here for Broadway Cares Equity Fights Aid. Sergio will talk a little bit about this. His husband, Jack Noseworthy, who's a fantastic actor, by the way. Uh, he, and we're talking about something a little specific you're about to see for Jack. But Jack works for Broadway Cares Equity Fights Aid. It's another incredible, incredible organization that's going to be doing a lot of help for a lot of people in need during this time. Mary, throw up that uh, domain at some point during this live stream so everyone can give a little if they can. To Broadway Cares or the Actors Fund, uh, it's a tough time for all these folks. So give if you can. Don't forget, stay home, stay safe, stay, I just reversed that. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay home. Um, this is what it's all about and we're hearing lots of things these days. Uh, about everything you can do. Uh, New York now are being recommended to wear masks if you're going to public places. So take a look at all that stuff. Just listen to what everyone's saying. Just listen and do it. You know, just like a two-year-old, just listen and do exactly what your parents tell you to do. I think Sergio would tell you that's not exactly the way it works, but that's what we're going to do because we're not two years old. We're going to stay home. Uh, last night, I just wanted to draw attention. Last night, Lee Silverman talked about doing this virtual workshop. Um, today on my blog, we posted 10 tips for a virtual reading based on Lee's suggestions uh, and um, Jill Chodorov Kaminsky, who is a member of uh, many uh, one of my groups and part of my uh, inner circle, if you will. Um, she has been doing readings and she composed these 10 tips. So they're not even mine but we publicize them. So check out the blog today. If you want to do a reading, there's 10 tips on how to pull off a more successful one. Okay, are you ready? Let's get to this, strike it, reverse it. Let's get to the man of the half hour. Please welcome to the live stream, Mr. Sergio Trujillo. Sergio. Hey, Ken. Thanks so much for adjusting your time. I literally just put on this shirt because I was in my jammies and I thought, you know what? Let me just look a little bit more presentable. But thank you for adjusting your time. It's uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's Lucas has become so because you all all of the parents out there, by the way, all of you, yeah. I totally get it. You have all of my respect. It is it is the most beautiful thing I've, I've, we have ever ever done. It is just that is just life changing. So I know you have a two year old. I have a two year old. And by the way, Lucas decided to become. It hit his terrible twos the day we began began our isolation. So for the last three weeks, we've been dealing with a with a with a, a two year old and his terrible twos. And you're this is a little bit of a reversal for you because you're usually you know flying all over the world, directing new companies, auditioning, doing all the stuff on all your shows, and now you're stuck at home. Your husband, who works for Broadway Cares, is a very active time for him. You're doing the nanny, is that right? Is that what you're doing? Yes, it, I, I listen. I'm I'm discovering 
I'm doing things that I've never done before, but taking care of Lucas is 24 seven. Again, all, all the parents out there, I get it. Ken, I get it. You know, I, you have my, my respect, but yeah, no, but listen, so yeah, from the moment that Lucas wakes up, I'm, I'm the man. It's me. It's on. And I'm on. And I'm also, I've never cooked. So Alexa, good old Alexa is helping me get through all of this because I do. Hey, Alexa, what do I make today? Alexa, how do I make a chicken piccata? Alexa. So because I'm listening, the only thing I can make is coffee. So I'm um, all of these new skills I'm discovering through this whole thing. So, uh, but Jack, on um, the other hand, you know, is he's been working 12, 14 hour days uh, in the office, which I'm in right now, um, working on on uh, on a specific campaign for for Broadway Cares Equity Five Aids for the Actors Fund for COVID. Oh. And the bucket right here. Um, so please donate to this great cause. Uh, but no, I'm I'm very proud of, of what Jack is doing right now. He's uh, he's being so devoted, and um, you know we we need. We need for all of us to to pull through together through all of this and try to help out as much as we can. Yeah, it's a very difficult time, and um, I, I have to like your Alexa comments. I, I literally asked Alexa the other day, "How do you make bacon?" Like you're doing chicken piccata. I was like, "I think there's some bacon in here." I was like, "How do you make bacon?" And I fried it up, and my wife came out and she was like, "Are you making bacon?" I said, "Yeah," and then she said. That bacon's been sitting in there for like three months. It tasted okay to me. So I I tried, I tried that over the weekend, and and I I, I can't I, I can't deny that I was a little bit of a mess as well. So so it's it's all it's all it's all. Uh, um, by the time this is all done, I'll be I'll be a a, 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 a matri this summer. I'll be my, my second career. <laughs> so tell me. Um, where I've been asking everyone this, which is where where you were you when the virus hit the fan, if you will? Like when where were you? What were you doing when all of a sudden you knew that this was different, that we weren't going to be able to just brush this off, and that you were going to have to come home if you were away and hunger down? When did you? When did it become real? Um, you know, luckily, well, I have a, I live on a on a great building with a great group of neighbors, and one of my neighbors uh, who lives on the hallway has a, a lot of relatives in, in Korea. And she was keeping us abreast. As a matter of fact, she was a little bit of an alarmist, but not so much anymore because she actually was encouraging us to go to order food, to get you know, to to get all supplies. And she was sending us lists and doing all of the research. So I would I would say that about it's been four weeks that we have been preparing for this. But we were I was actually it was on a Wednesday. Uh, it was the Wednesday, yeah, three and a half weeks ago, where um, I got a call from from Terrible Rubin Casting because we were supposed to go into final auditions for the tour of Into Proud. And we had all of these uh, different actors that were coming in from everywhere. And so that is what I remember vividly. Like, that is the moment that I knew that, you know, something was going on. And then we took it, we took it very, very serious again, all of us. And, you know, it changes again. When you have children, you know, the priorities change. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's sort of like, you know, it's like a twilight zone-ish for all of us. You know, I have this sort of, this sort of, my body is always sort of vibrating a little bit because mm -hmm. it's just, it's all of the, for all of us is the unknown. You know, we're all, we're all in this together, but it's also something we have never, none of us have ever been through. So, um, yeah, so that, that's, 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 that's what I remember vividly. And besides Ain't Too Proud, obviously running on Broadway now in a tour, did you have other shows that were affected by this for projects? Yeah, luckily and unfortunately, I had seven shows that were affected by all of this. Um, the rollout, I mean, Jersey Boys continues to, you know, to have world domination. Um, so Jersey Boys was affected um, on your feet, which was during the UK. Um, Bronx Dale, which was touring uh, nationally. Summer, which was touring nationally. Uh, Into Proud, of course. Uh, Joseph was off Broadway. And then I had, um, I came in to, uh, to redo from scratch Paramore for Cirque du Soleil in Hamburg. Uh, so that one as well. Now it's really, I was supposed to go uh, three weeks ago. I was supposed to be there to do my, because uh, we were going to the, next, the, the second year of the show and I was going to go in for auditions as well. So you know, and then I had auditions for all of the replacements for all of it. I mean, it's just been, 
you know, the uh, re rescheduling, but really right now everyone's on a standstill, you know. Mm -hmm. So again, it's 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 uncharted territories for all of us, and um, you know, just I think we're just making it up as we go along, you know, and really relying on each other for support and 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 uh, guidance, really. And what are you doing to keep? I mean, you're such a positive guy, and you obviously so prolific. You do so many shows and you love to work in, on so many projects. How are you keeping projects going or keeping yourself up when you when we're stuck in these apartments and uh, during this time? So, you know, I've, I've been, truthfully, I have to be honest with you, I've been wanting to to take a, 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 a sabbatical of sorts for a while, like at least six months of my life to be able to like really focus in on, 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 on work projects and ideas and stories that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And so, you know, this is the time. This is so I've been, as well as balancing, you know, my many, my, <laughs> my many responsibilities, you know, I, I'm getting to, um, you know, I have, I have uh, five new shows that I'm, that I'm developing as director, choreographer. Oh. Yeah. One of them I'm doing with, um, with my husband, Jack Noseworthy. He, we optioned the rights uh, based on a film called Real Woman of Curves. It's a beautiful story. Uh, uh, and uh, Atlantic story, um, empowering story for women, uh, and so we're working on that together. And we, we're all of these different projects are in different in different phases of development. Um, I'm actually doing a, I don't know what's going to happen to it now, but um, I'm doing a new show at the public that I'm co-directing with Tony Tacone that Susan Laurie Parks wrote called "The Harder They Come," based on a on a, on a film from the 1970s, mm -hmm. a cult film. Uh, that uh, with Jimmy Cliff uh, using Jimmy Cliff's music, beautiful story, uh, and that one, you know, it's it's this the one that's coming up the soonest. So again, I'm using all of the time to just you know just keep going and and try to you know figure out how to how to balance life and stress and and use this time to really dig in and and really um, devote time to those to those ideas and the stories and our friends and. And you know, it also allows us to bond. You know, to you know, for the for those two hours. And by the way, Zoom. Everyone, I'm sure everyone's using Zoom now. So you know, it allows us to connect in that way. Whether you know, it's up, it's, it's with the composer or with the entire team. You know, it's like, it's uh, it's really, really, you know, sort of sacred time right now. It's 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 like it's kind of you know, it's, it's almost like religion right now. Like we're all, you know, at a really religious gathering or sort to allow us, you know, to bring some peace through our through our work. First of all, I love to hear that you're doing more and more directing now. It's just, ever since I started watching you as a choreographer, I was like, "Oh, this guy is going to be one of these great director choreographers on Broadway." So I love to hear that that uh, is now something you're certainly adding to your resume. But obviously, a lot of your work is going to be movement based because you're a choreographer first, you're dancer first, a Broadway vet, then choreographer, and now you can't move. <laughs> you can't. Like unless you have some dance studio there, which you'd be the only probably person in New York City that has a dance studio in their apartment. So how, how do you, this is really, whether it's in a pandemic or not, when you're developing a new piece, what is your developmental process like? Do you do it in an office like that usually? Or is it usually in a studio and you're just changing it up for this? Well, you know, I think where we're at, it, where I'm at in all of these different projects, in terms of development, I'm not. We're not at a place where I can put my choreographer's hat on. You know, I think. I think for me, in terms of my process and the process of, of developing an, an, an original, because by the way, these are all original shows; they're not revivals, and some of them are based on on books or uh, you know movies or what have you, and, and none of them are are based on. Uh, you know, the the heart of the come has a, a Jimmy Cliff's catalog, but it's just. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a true, it's a fictional story. But anyway, um, so right now I am, I'm, I'm, you know, this, what, what this time is also allowing me is to really do the, the research and, and uh, really dig into each one of the stories. And, you know, I think right now too, and it happens when I'm choreographing as well. Sometimes the ideas come at the least expected times, you know, I can, I could be on a walk or I could be with Lucas or I could be with Jack or we can have dinner, you know, my mind is always, is always at work. So, 
it, it's always, and even, and again, and then when I start to choreograph, even those ideas are always at work. I, I always tell this great story when I was, when I was doing Memphis, um, it was a, a, a number that I couldn't quite crack open. And uh, it was a, a, a song called Radio in the show. In, in the show. And, and so I, I wasn't sure how to approach that number. And, and what I was, we were living in Harlem at the time and I happened to be walk, walking by a, a playground and these young girls were playing double Dutch. These African-American girls play, were playing double Dutch. And that and seeing those girls playing, doing double Dutch, like opened up a whole set of oh. ideas for the numbers. So, you know, I think, I think divine intervention <laughs> and, 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 and the, the ideas come, come, you know, before that, because I feel like it's important for, for it always to be, you know, for, for it always to be alive, you know, uh, in you as you as you as you go about your day and when when you are when you put that choreographic hat on and you go into a studio do you do you go into a studio knowing the steps you're going to teach to do or how much of it is improvisational based on the dancers on the spot or do you go in knowing okay i'm going to teach this number here's exactly what it's going to be from start to finish so i you know for me I have, I have, I, I begin to formulate the ideas about what the story of the specific number wants to, to be, and so I don't write them down because for me, it's, you know, choreography is such a physical, mm. it's a physical uh, way of creating. But what I do is, you know, I go into the studio with usually uh, I build, I build my the process. So I, I begin with with my associate and the dance arranger and a percussionist. And I begin to, to experiment with, with the way that, that the, the world, the, the world of the show moves, because I think, and before that, I, I, I would have done all of the research that I could have done with, with, with the, the period or, 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 or cultural references or anything like that. Cause I feel like that knowledge empowers you and liberates you. Uh, and so when I go into the studio, you know, I know all of that. And then I just begin to, to, to dance really, uh, knowing again, I know what, what my, the story that it is that I want to tell. And, but, but I also want to find a way of, 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 of movement. Like what is, what is that? Like, how does, how does this, how does Memphis move? How does, you know, ain't too proud move? How does, uh, you know, on your feet move, you know, all that, that, and next to normal, you know, it's all very specific. And, and that is my gateway into into each one of the into the shows. What was the first show that you choreographed? Once you decide when you were starting to make the transition from dancer to choreographer. So the first show that I choreographed uh, was um, uh, I was uh, I was when when I decided to choreograph, I thought you know, I think. What, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Toronto and choreograph shows in Toronto because I'll, bigger fish, I'll be a bigger fish in a smaller pond. Because mm -hmm. uh, it was important for me to be able to really uh, work on my craft. And that meant really, you know, go up to bat. What are you going to do in a real, in a real, with real professional, you know, uh, jobs? I mean, you can be doing a workshop where you can be doing smaller uh, uh, projects or some uh, labs or what have you. But it's really when you have to, really, you know, what the responsibility is on you to choreograph big number, production numbers in a big show, that's when you really begin to really hone in on your craft, I think. So I uh, I, I was uh, lucky enough to choreograph uh, at the Stratford Festival. I did a, a revival of West Side Story in 1999, which, uh, you know, we got, we got phenomenal reviews. I used, you know, of course, the original choreography, but there were numbers I didn't know the original choreography to, and the Robin State was, was, was kind enough to allow me to just create my own work. So that was that was one of the things that and from that i got peggy sue got married in the west end uh when that was in 2001 during right before september 11th so oh, so that was you know that was where it all that was where it all began to take shape uh and then you know i stayed outside of new york for between 2001 and 2004 working on on various shows in, in canada and some of them in l.a because I knew that, you know, it's it's the thing about about uh, you know when that opportunity presents itself, you have to be, you know, you have to hit it out of the ballpark, and uh, and you know, and I, I felt prepared. I felt like I had done my work. I'd also by that time I'd assisted, 
you know, uh, very, you know, Jerry Mitchell, Debbie Allen, Michael Peters, Rob Marshall, um, and worked in some, you know, phenomenon. You know, I worked on, on Jerome Robbins Broadway and Fosse. So, you know, you take all of that, all of that knowledge, all of that information, and you just, you just trust. I love this big fish in a small pond idea. It rem reminds me a little bit of my start because when I started producing, I didn't produce Broadway shows or co-produce, but I like literally jumped into off Broadway so I could have all the responsibility, have to make those decisions for better or for worse to learn by being in charge uh, rather than, you know, try to sit just around a table with 10 other people, which you can learn a lot from, but I was like, no, no, just throw me in the firing line so I, I know how to deal with this. I love that approach. Yeah, no, you I, I think, I think you know, it just, it just presents a different set of challenges and responsibilities that are, that are, it's like going to, go, going to medical school, you know, you can only learn so much through, <laughs> through studying. You actually have to actually get in the room. You have to actually have to go to the operating table. Or you have to go to the ER. You, know, you have to <laughs> you do your residency because that's when you really start to learn. So yeah. Uh, let's see if we've got some questions. If you have a question for Sergio, go ahead and throw them into the comment box. Here's one. Uh, which show, you've done a lot of shows and so many great ones. I assume that's where you, uh, Peggy Sue is where you met Bob Gaudio for the first time? Is that where you met Bob? I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm working, sure. with him, working with him now. He's working on the Neil Diamond show with me because of his relationship with Neil. So. Yeah. I mean, he, he's, he's, he's just a, a, a a real, real talent. I mean, he's just, he can, he can write some beautiful music. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So, um, Clay Holly asks, which show has been the most challenging of yours to chore choreograph, whether it's the quietness of the sort of material, et cetera, which was the most challenging, which show and why? Uh, it was hands on a hard body. Uh, oh, because, yeah. I mean, I didn't do it on in La Jolla. I did it here in New York. Uh, because the real challenge was how do I tell this story? How do I theatricalize this story through dance? Um, and in a show where the characters have to have their hands on a truck for the entire show. Uh, and so I asked the producers when, actually uh, so Chris Ashley, a, good, uh, a, a great friend of mine, he asked me to work on it. I said, um, Sure, but before I even sign up on, on doing the show, I have to go into a studio for three weeks with a makeshift truck. I don't care if it's made out of cardboard, but I have to figure out if I have a way into it. And, and so, and it was actually the scariest one out of all of them too, because I just didn't know how to crack it open. You know, for a choreographer, you know, <laughs> to to be limited with your hands tied up, you know, it's like, and, you know, it's like, and choreograph, go, you know, Basically, my, I'm talking about my legs being tied up. Like you just, you know, and so, but once I, once I, I, I discovered that, you know, like what was the framing device of of, of launching into a into a, a, a musical number. Once I did that, you know, then I, you know, it, it began, I began to to trust it uh, because there's always a fear. I think I think we always. I know I do. There's always a little bit of fear. I'm always. Even tonight to talk to you, you know, I always, you know, I get nervous. I get nervous, and not not because I'm because there's always fear, there was always unknown, you know, all of those things. But that makes me that makes me alive. And so, but yeah, I think hands on a hard body is was probably the most challenging. Mm. You talked about auditioning a couple times tonight. What do you look for in a performer? Like, what do you when they walk in the room? What what do you notice about people first? What makes you want to cast someone? You know, I, I love I love uh, dancers, actors, singers who aren't afraid of being who they are. Um, I think you know I think I, I I can only say this of myself, but I would imagine that 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 a lot of, of people in, in 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 my position is sometimes we look for ourselves in those people. You know, one of the reasons why I I decided really not, why I knew I was going to do it, but the dancer always felt stifled by having to dance somebody else's choreography, and it, and and Fosse was was that because you had to do it a certain way and you were so restricted and your hands had to be here and you had to do this, and I just felt like I felt caged in and I couldn't let my spirit soar through. And and what I enjoy in in rehearsals is when I'm able to give 
a choreographer, I mean, a, a dancer, my work, and they're able to take that work and, and, and sort of express, express it through their, through their soul, through themselves, through that, that is, so that's what I look for. I, I look for, for, for somebody who's not afraid of being who they are. You know, obviously, you know, I have, there are, there are rules, there are accounts, there are lines, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Cause it's not a, you know, it's not a, it's not, it's not up for grabs. I mean, but, but, you know, it, I think it is, it's like, it's, it's, the, it's, it's those people that are really, really not afraid of. Was it, speaking of fear, was it hard to tell people like, Oh, I'm not going to dance anymore. I'm going to start to choreograph now. Did, were you nervous about telling people that and thinking like, Oh boy, here comes another dancer that wants to choreograph. Was that hard? No, you know, I think, for me has is always a, a process of transition so and when i make my when i've made my decision you know i go i'm, I'm full you know full on so i was going to university to study I, I, I was studying biochemistry at the university of toronto and then i went to chiropractic school but really what i loved i wanted to be a dancer but it took me a few years between the time I was in university and chiropractic school to really, really commit to the fact that I wanted to dance. And so once I made the decision to dance, I just, I left Canada. I came to New York to be a dancer. The same thing with choreography. I knew towards the end of my dance career, and I had a great career of 10 years. My first show was drummer, I was Broadway, my last show was Fosse. And during that time, you know, I was studying. I was studying from great masters. So I was, when I made that decision, you know, I was prepared to move on and I was going to choreograph. And, uh, you know, the same thing with, with directing choreographing. You know, I've studied, I've, I've been, I've collaborated with some, some really phenomenally gifted directors. I mean, Des Mackinoff, who's, who's a brilliant man and, and my mentor, and Jerry Zachs and uh, uh, Michael Greif, Chris Ashley, Jerry Mitchell, you know, Rob Marshall, you know, all of these. So, when I was, you know, I, I've been I've been doing my masters and in, in, in directing for the last five six years. So, you know, now you know it's 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 it, I've, I've, I have to step up to the bat and 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 I'm and that's what I'm going to do. I love it. I, you you crossed over it so quickly, like it was no big deal. I don't know if any of you caught that out there. Yes, Sergio Trujillo, Tony Award winning choreographer, was going to be a chiropractor. Everybody he was going to be a chiropractor. Broadway is better off that you decided not to do that. So thank you for that. Uh, and thank you for being here tonight and um, putting your kid to bed and rushing over to our live stream. I so appreciate it. I always love chatting with you. And, uh, it's great to see you. Thank you. You know, I mean, this is um, the thing I love, I, love, I love about the Broadway community is how we can stand together and and, and you, by you, you know, doing this so we can raise money for the Actors Fund, but what Jack is doing, um, you know, with, uh, with, with, with Broadway cares as well, you know, this is, this is what makes me love what I do. And, uh, it makes me proud of, of being part of this community. And, and, uh, you know, it is, it is, uh, it is truly a, a, a heartwarming fan, a family. So thank you for, for having me on it. Thank it's you. my pleasure. My pleasure. We'll see you very soon. I can't wait. And we have to have another week at the kind of play date too. So I look forward to it forward to it. All right. Take care, my friend. Sergio Trujillo, everybody. What do you think about that? Amazing. I love stories like that. He was so on a path to do something else. He would have been a great chiropractor, I'm sure. Uh, but he's uh, he made a decision and he changed his path and he committed 100%, got what he wanted. And then he changed his path again, committed 100%, got what he wanted. So it's a fantastic lesson to all of you out there who want to do anything. Now is the time, as you heard him say, you got some time to dedicate and focus on whatever it is you want to focus on right now. Uh, do it. Uh, and you'll be staying home at the same time. You'll be doing a service to yourself and your future and to everybody else as well. Uh, thanks for being here tomorrow night. Janine Tesori, incredible composer, incredible lyricist going to be here tomorrow night. I first worked with Janine on Thoroughly Modern Millie. I uh, can't wait for her to share what she's up to during this crazy crisis. Uh, lots of fun people coming up next week. Um, we are on seven days a week. Uh, look at all those people. I see Susan Blackwell in there. I see Ken Leone in there. Stephen Bird, Jason Alexander from Seinfeld fame is in there. Mary Lou Henner, Justin Gore. I mean, this is it. 
ridiculous. It's just getting ridiculous. Uh, and I'm so blessed that these people are saying hello uh, to me and they'll be saying hello to all of you. So tune in. Don't forget about the Actors Fund. Don't forget about Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. Now we're in, by the way, Sergio put a nice shirt on. I stayed in my jammies. I just, I stayed in my jammies tonight because it was a late night issue. I hope that's okay. Before we go, something to make you smile. This is, uh, we always leave you now with a little something extra to make you smile. We are going to put a link up for another video. Uh, by the way, send us, if you if you have things that make you smile throughout the day, send it to Ken at theproducersperspective.com. Maybe you'll see it here and we'll give you a little shout out. This one is uh, comes to me from a co-producer of mine, Sandy Moran. Shout out to Sandy if she's watching. Uh, the Broadway Coronavirus Medley from Zach Timpson. This thing is something. You've got to see this thing. He does like 27 parodies in one. I did that one Keep Your Distance, right, with the three princesses, which were amazing. There's one song. One song. He does like 27 all himself. Broadway Coronavirus Medley. Go check it out. It's uh, it's super fun. You'll enjoy it. Count all the songs that he does, and I guarantee it'll put a smile on your face. Janine Tesori will put a smile on your face tomorrow night, so don't forget to tune into that. We will see you then. A little something extra we got for you tonight. Mary, show them the new card. Send them home with this.